It's all about the communication of love. Everything is based on the communication of love. Everything is based on that, on that communication. What other questions? Yeah? Is that spirit physically moving things? Yeah, isn't it cool? So how do you explain that since they're so inanimate, you know, since they're so ineffable, you know, how do they physically in this plane move things? It's the coolest thing, right? So, do you ever hear of something called like dark matter? Do you ever hear when scientists are talking about that? You can't say it. It interacts and moves things and changes things and it can bend light and you can't touch it at all. Our knowledge about the spiritual side of life is increasing. Our knowledge that we, our spirit doesn't need a physical body to move something. It doesn't need a physical body to change anything. Just like it doesn't need lungs to speak to me on a digital recorder and record its voice. It doesn't need any of that, or a brain, or anything else. And it's a validation that we really are a spirit. It's a validation that the body is just something we're having an experience in. Our job is not to bring, our job is to, to bring a spiritual experience to a human existence. That's our job. Our job is to bring a spiritual experience into a human existence. To show the difference, this is a human, a human existence, but we're going to show you how to be spiritual in this existence. Hmm. And inside of that, inside of that way, that's when life shifts the greatest. That's when you see the greatest. But we, we are capable of that. We're all capable of shifting things in our life. But it's not that we are making an effort to do it. We're just increasing our sincere effort to be loving, to communicate in a loving way, to change our words all our actions, the way we interact, what we love as a career, what we love as far as clothes, the kind of people that we love. Relationships are key. Relationships are key where, let me just share a little bit about forgiving and being forgiven. It's two different things. And so because we're the spirit who's finding our way in life, if we recognize that amongst everyone, we're finding our way in life. We're learning how to be forgiving towards people because we don't expect them to make the right choices. We don't expect people to say the right thing or to come across in the loving way that they're capable of doing. We don't expect it. And so we learn how to be forgiven. But at the same time, we're not foolish to share with our, our life with someone because we are not obligated to share our life with anyone. We get to choose. And we shouldn't be foolish enough to choose someone to share our life with if they refuse to be open to the truth or to change themselves in a loving way. The truth can be different from the other person's truth. It's a universal truth. Like love is universal. If you quiet your brain, a state of peace comes over to you. If that's anybody in the world, that's universal. There's a difference between personal, what's true to someone, and universal truth to you. Yeah. Rich, um, have you sensed, experienced, or communicated with other dimensions besides the earth planet? Yes, and I don't understand it all. Yes. I always tell people about my personal experiences. I've communicated with people that live on different planets. I, I hate the fact that people call one another aliens. You know, they're aliens, they're, they're just a spirit. And I can tell you about the communication. I don't tell a lot of people about this. No, I'm being recorded, so. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, yes, it has, on, it has on occasion. I've also communicated and seen, because I can't, when I first started doing all this, again, the whole thing is seeing growth. You know, when I first did my first gallery, six people. Now the most I've done is 28 people in like a two-hour time. But the information has also gotten better. I can also actually see spirits walking around where I can never do that before. So again, me validating that this thing is growing inside of me, I'm, I'm seeing all that. I've also communicated and seen, um, spiritually seen, people in different dimensions and I don't understand them. So I'll keep you updated this time. Do you study Edgar Casey at all? Um, I don't study anything or anyone, but I'm aware of it, Edgar Casey. And if you think about it, and they called him the sleeping giant, all he did was quiet his brain. He allowed himself to get inspired. He put himself in a state of almost sleep, or quiet his brain, the same thing that I'm sharing with you. He's no different than the composers, or Tesla, or Einstein, or anybody else that was inspired with knowledge. Even professional athletes don't tell you, I don't think. There's no way you can think about hitting a ball that's coming 105 miles an hour at you and you have time to think about, okay, I want my brain to move this leg forward. You react to it because you're able to sense the right thing to do. Same thing with football players or anybody else. They don't think. 
And so it's the same thing with Casey. He put himself, the same thing, no different than what I do. I put myself in a state of peace. I quiet my brain, allow my spirit to be inspired, and I make myself aware of other different sources of spiritual energy, and I receive that knowledge. And he just did it better. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever use uh, my yeah, when I first started doing all this, you know, sometimes people use cards to do readings and whatnot. These are all these are all great tools to educate us that we can do it on our own. So what I always share with people, remember, your life is a spiritual evolution. It's going to expand. And if it doesn't, it's because we're not expanding it the way that we should. So when you touch an object, that's a source of spiritual energy. If you go to a location like uh, the Gettysburg or the battlefield or something, a spiritual location, and you know there's a difference between spirits that have ascended and spirits connected to the earth. The spirits that are connected to the earth, something unloving happened to them. Think about all the places you think of that are haunted. Something always unloving happened. Gettysburg, people killed each other unloving. If you hear about the ghost investigations and they're going to go to the same asylum where everybody was tortured or they're going to go over here where everybody else was punished, it's always something unloving. And so remember, the source of love Source of love purifies our spirit. When you're unloving, you can't lie about it, and it keeps you more earthbound. It keeps you connected. And so, when I talk to people, on, when I talk to people on the other on the other side, we'll share the difference in where they are. So, anything that's a source of love, uh, or anything that's a source of energy, your spirit can know what it knows. I don't anything, but. Um, remember, like, like I mean, that, like if you pick up something, like. Um, it's imprinted with energy. If I, if you have, if my grandmother, my grandmother's crossed over, she gave me her, if somebody gave me her cross, it's imprinted with her energy. Right. right? And, and so, feel and so that energy tells you a story. It's a source of energy. Right. Yeah. Any kind of source of energy that you get connected to, and everything is energy, it will communicate with you. Animals. I don't, I'm on tape again. Um, animals too. Source of energy. I can't tell you how many times the animals have come through. They don't speak to me like English. They don't go and speak, talk to me like that. I just know what they know. They know what I know. They'll, I'm, I know their name. They'll tell me things that happened in their house. They'll talk about how they passed away. They'll talk about the other people inside of their house that you know that raised them, who was mean to them, who was nice to them. They share, it's just spirit. Birds, nature, same exact thing. Yes, anybody else? Question? Oh, right. I have a question about how can you nurture the spirit or inspire the spirit in such that it in the presence. Faith. It's all about faith. You have an ability that people just didn't tell you to process on how it works. I learned that it's not something that I developed. It's something I got back to. It's something I eliminated the resistance of my brain that prevented me from gaining all this, and I just became a student. I became grateful. You know, when I first started doing all this, and I was able to quiet my brain for three seconds, and then finally I got it, you know, for like 15 minutes, unless it took me a month. You know, of every single day being there, and then I looked at it and go like, you know, it's not happening the way I want, and I realize this is my brain talking. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just be grateful that it's happening at all. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should be part of that growth, and maybe it's going to happen more in the future. Maybe that's a test for me to show faith in that. Mm -hmm. And so, inside of the way, that's what I can share with you, faith. Faith that you, you're already created to be able to do this, it's just our sincere, willful effort. It's a sincere effort, it's the will of your spirit making a sincere effort. You mentioned blind faith. Who do you specifically have? Who is your blind faith in? My spirit. So the is, communication. Who is spirit? We all have spirit. So you have a spirit. Right. You have a spirit. Higher wisdom. Right? right. Higher wisdom. God, whatever the case may be. I show blind faith in the communication that I'm receiving through my spirit. So anytime you feel, you sense, you know something inside, your brain might talk you out of it. There might be a moment where you're supposed to speak the truth to someone. And then your brain all of a sudden says, nope, you're not going to do it. They're not going to agree with you. They're not going to, they're not going to acknowledge you. Get your spirit. The first thing your spirit says, go speak the truth to that person. And do it in a loving way. And all of a sudden your brain talked you out of it. You have to show faith in that. And everything that you do in life, like, you, like I said, like, you know, I would go to the store and I would purposely, can I feel, can I sense what I need? Can I sense where the milk is, where the, where the pickles are? I just played a game to see if it was true or not. And now this is a way of life. I live this life not something that I think of mediumship or medical intuition or talking to the masters or seeing it's just the language of our spirit it's the language of God it's universal everybody has the same thing you always hear people say I saw visions I, I got an image I felt something I sensed something inside I never say I was thinking 
It's just the language of your spirit. So Rich, the way you talk about it, it's like almost like exercising a muscle, like a spiritual muscle, the way I hear you describing it. It's that, would that kind of be an accurate description? It, because it grows, Karen. Yeah. Yes. If you show faith in exercising your spirit, which is a muscle, it's going to expand and it's going to grow 100%. Yes. So, so exercises are kind of, it's almost like you're doing spiritual push-ups or calisthenics. Sure. Or, or you're pushing, you're willing, you're willing your spirit yes. to grow in terms of your intention. Yes. That's what I'm hearing you say. Well, it's not so much the intention, because when you talk about intention, you're talking about, I intend to do something, but I'm not quite sure if I can do it or not. So I know people use intention a lot, and I don't see it that way. You don't, you don't want to ever intend to do something then you might not. You want to get back to a way of life that we were created with. It's not intention. You can just do it. So it's almost like you're compelling yourself to do something that you were created to do. And you're getting away from the way we were unwisely taught growing up, which is to make our brain our source of knowledge. Well, I would imagine that as you listen, as you practice listening, and going with what you feel right, that your discernment gets even more and more refined, right? Yeah, what gets more refined? Your discernment gets even more and more refined. Go ahead. Yes? But that's my point, that as you're, because even Oprah talks about, you know, knowing what she needs to do but not necessarily doing it, once she started to listen, once, once any of us started to listen, I would imagine that your discernment gets more and more fine because it's easier to separate what's this voice from really what's the voice of spirit. Correct. So you're learning, there's two voices inside of us, is what she's saying. The first feeling I got, what I know to be true, remember I was telling you before, you got inspired, plus that information came before your brain. So it shows you you're in a state of oneness. And in that way, you're being guided with knowledge that's going to satisfy some kind of spiritual need or some kind of loving experience is going to produce from it all. She had to learn to get away from her second voice, trying to talk her out of the existence of her spirit. I've never had my brain go, hey, Rich, you have a spirit. It's amazing. Listen to that instead of me. Why not? <laughs> How come that doesn't happen? And so what I've learned about all this is that because this is our evolutionary process, we have to prove this. We have to demonstrate this in life, that we have the faith in our spirit, in a higher source of knowledge, and we have to demonstrate that in our life. You can't repeat words and expect to be spiritually centered. You have to do what you're saying. You're a student. Learn the different languages, the two different voices, and then make the right choice and faith to follow the one that you know is going to lead you in life properly. Yeah. Uh, about that I experienced something, I have something that happened. That was a word. I mean, I didn't do it before. But after something works out, then I realize it worked out very well. Explain that again. Okay, so, I don't remember if this happened. Um, um, yeah, um, I was concerned about somebody who occurred who was you not know, quite able to have an accident. Sure. And um, then I called them and they found me, you know, and you know, that's, you know, that, you know, that was just it. So, you've got... I mean, I didn't have to say. I don't know what I did, and I don't think I did, you know. Yeah. I prayed, 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 the years have gone on. But when you go and you interpret the energy, like one person came up to me, this is an example I love to share with you, that once a person came up to me and said, I hate doing this, you know, I'm very intuitive, but I can see when people are going to die. And, I, and they felt like they were going to cause it, or they felt like everything that they saw. And so what I shared with them is this, is that that ability that you can interpret the truth apply it to anything else in your life that you make yourself aware of. Everybody's going to die sooner or later. And don't look at it as a mental thing where you look at it as death. The truth is nobody dies. There's no such thing as spiritual death. What you are seeing is the time here on life, is, or in physical existence, is just about up. See it for what it is. And then what you do, instead of looking at it as death, looking at it like if you share someone, 
Say you share, share a story with someone that someone might pass away, you found the courage to do that. And well, let me share with you about this true story, right? So a couple comes to me, again, it's a state, right? A couple comes to me and during the, the reading, I said, oh, I see a man passing in the, in the future. I'm gonna say within six months. I feel like it's either your father or your father, then your father's still alive. Yes, but for me to say that, to find the courage, how do you say it? What if you're wrong? What if you're all to that information? What if you share something with someone, right, in such a way, right, where people go like, oh my God, I've been waiting for six months for him to die, you're driving me crazy, I can't believe you said that. What if all that happens and that's what your brain's gonna tell you? But if I was sharing other information prior to that, it was all validated by then, and all of a sudden this information came, I have to decide on whether I'm gonna show faith or not. And maybe doing something in a loving way, maybe my words have to represent communication in a loving way, unconditional. So I said, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm dead wrong. But I see an unexpected death, a heart attack, one of the fathers. My suggestion would be this, is that if you want to do something with him, if you want to spend time with him, if you want to tell him how much that you love him, my suggestion would be you do that. I hope I'm wrong, he lives to 160, but what if I'm right? And so me, big act of faith, because I've never done that before. Two months later, I get an email. My father passed away, unexpected from a heart attack. We plan on doing a vacation, I would never have done it because what you said to me, I went on that vacation with him. I got to tell him I loved him, I got to spend time with him, I got to do, that's a true story. I can't thank you enough for giving me the opportunity to say goodbye to my father the way we always talk to him. That was a personal miracle to me. I've never done that before in my life, but that was a personal, I have so many stories like that. But it's also about, if this is really, communication that's based on the truth, if it's really, really true, and all the other information was coming true, then I had to show faith that that was coming true, and some loving experience was going to happen after. That's how you know you're connected to a higher risk again. Do you feel that there's negative energies or entities that are trying to make a evolution? 100%. Evolution, our spirit, I look at it as in life, you have physical bullies, we beat each other up, or we might even have parents or someone's around that talk to us in a loving way, unloving way. I would go into homes, and if you're spiritually weak, they're a spiritually strong spirit because they don't think anymore. They're much stronger than you. They can influence you in such a way where it's like you got physically beat up. But if your spirit grows, they're a spirit just like you. So now I can walk in their presence with more of a loving essence, and instead of them having an effect on me, I can have an effect on them because I can see what, what's causing them to be that way, and I'll go right to the truth. If you speak, the truth can't be debated, even to spirits on the other side. If they grew up in an unloving way, and they're just demonstrating that, and I can see how they grew up in an unloving way, then I just explain it to them. And then they go back because it's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more, I mean, like a, um, like an energy or a force that is trying to keep us from evolving. You mean as a people, as, a, as an entire? I've never thought that. Yeah. Never thought that. Okay. I mean, I've heard from time, and I don't know whether I believe that or not, but just that, that, you know, just in mass, that there are energies or entities that do not want us to evolve. They're affecting us. There, I've never met a spirit or an entity that I couldn't communicate with, and if I, and I saw some knowledge about them that I could share with them, that would have an effect on them. I've never had a spirit. I've never had. I've never been in contact with them. And I've been to. I mean, I've never had a, like what you're talking about. I've gone to individual places. I've talked to spirits, helped them move on, communicated with them in my galleries all the time, personal life. But I've never felt a big force that is just driving people in one direction like that. I've never felt that. Before. Yeah. Do you believe in psychic attack? What's a psychic attack? What's the question? What do, you do really I believe in a psychic attack? attack? I, I recently found out that an experience I had when I was much younger ended up being a psychic attack. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's going back to what I was saying with you. In life, can you have a bully, a physical bully that can dominate you? Right. You can feel weak, you can feel scared. This one made me so sick, I was throwing up and everything else. So now imagine crossing over. So you cross over, you're still the same unloving person, you don't have a body anymore, you're the same unloving way. They're influencing you, make you sick, yes. I've had so many times I've been into places where if you haven't grown your spirit, they can have an influence on us. But here's the thing, it's not they're intentionally doing it. 
They're influencing the essence of what they've learned. If they're an unloving essence, they don't have to attack you. They can just be next to you and you can feel the, the unloving essence towards you. It's like being in a room. If everybody's an alcoholic and you're living in a house with all alcoholics or drug addicts or someone who's just damaging your life, self-destructing your life, you're going to feel that energy. It's going to have an effect on you. You're going, I can't be there anymore. It's no different than them on the other side. I've also had physical symptoms that came along with the spirit that actually attacked me. Anything, you're, they can affect the physical world. 100%. But at the very same time, you can influence them. When your spirit... Well, that's my point. That's my point. My point is that nobody shares this information with us. Nobody helps us grow our spirit. Like I said, love is key. It's all about love. If somebody's being unloving, if somebody's being unloving to us, um, you give insight or advice about relationships, and you might tell them about how love works. Why? Why don't you tell them to be hateful to one another? Does that bring happiness? And you go, no, it doesn't. You have to be loving in order to achieve the outcome of happiness. They're no different. Something that they did, say somebody was a rapist, somebody was a murderer, they crossed over. They're still doing the same exact thing because they were unloving in life and they can have an effect on us. I always thought that once people crossed over, even if they were battling or alive, they have a chance to progress once they pass. Everybody, we can progress here, everybody can progress, but they need a source of wisdom to help us. That's why we can teach that. That's why we can have an effect on them. So when we go and I go into these locations and I share, oh no, I can feel like you were, you were the unloving person. You hurt women, you hurt people, you hurt animals. Let me explain to you about your life. It humbles them. Because they're no different. They have the same natural laws that we have. They're open to love. And all of a sudden if you share with them you know, how they were, they were influenced in an unloving way, they're duplicating it. It's not going to give them the happiness or the peace or the joy or what they're looking for because everybody's searching for that higher love. When you explain it to them, it has an effect on them. It's just how God made it. Everything's based on the communication of love. That's why we can affect one another here. Um, I have to end it. Um, yeah. So I want to I want to apologize, um, but I know we're way past time. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thanks so much, Rich. We appreciate you being here tonight. Thank everybody for coming. Um, please go on to our